welcome to the Leonomics Show. And today we have with us John Ryan, President of CCL, the Center for Creative Leadership. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rashan. What brings you to Malaysia? We're here uh, talking to some of our clients and looking for additional clients. So what does CCL do? We, we, we uh, like to think that our mission is to, to develop the understanding, practice, and development of leadership for the benefit of society worldwide. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty noble, yeah. and it is. We're an educational not-for-profit. and. Okay. We do good things around the world. Well, what are some of the good things that you do around the world? <laughs> well, we help people to untap the potential within them to be leaders. Okay. And in addition to helping individuals, we help drive the leadership strategy for organizations like yours or mm -hmm. big organizations to help them to accomplish their mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a leadership strategy that's linked with your business strategy, you're going to be successful. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you help build leaders? Well, we've been doing this for 40 years. So okay. we were founded by a businessman who said the world needed more creative leadership. Okay. And so what we do is we do research on leadership. Okay. We, we put out books. We studied, for instance, Asian leaders and how they're different and how they're alike leaders in other parts of the world. We're putting out two books next month okay. that really uh, are based on our research of Asian leaders. Okay. So, I mean, in terms of leadership in general, I mean, there's tons of books on leadership. Yeah. And everybody has yeah. the four E's and this yeah. and that. Everybody yeah. has a formula for leadership. Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on leadership? Well, our take is based on 40 years of uh, research. And what we say is that leaders help set direction, alignment, and, and commitment in organizations. And they do that by influencing other men and women that they're privileged to lead. Okay. And how do they do that? I mean, how, how does one aspire to become a leader? The same way that you become a great soccer player or a right. great musician, right. you practice. Okay. And you know, that sounds so darn simple, but that's what it's all about. And so you can accelerate the uh, development of competencies and skills, but becoming a solid, really good leader and then an exceptional leader is just like becoming a world-class athlete. You've right. got to practice and it's got to be the right kind of practice. And, and what's the right kind of practice? This, I mean, you know, there's people who say, do this and you'll be a leader right. and do that, but right. what, is there a specific? Well, here's, here's how you and I learn as adults. Okay. We learn by doing. And okay. so we did a study uh, many years ago that we're still co uh, continuing, and it's, it's called Lessons of Experience, Russian. And what okay. that tells you is that uh, you and I learn, 70% of what we learn, we learn on the job. 20% right. we learn by talking to other men and women that we admire and respect, whether it's a parent or a coach. or and then 10% is done in programs like we offer. Yep, where you live like open, open enrollment, custom programs where we help you to become more self-aware. That's one of the fundamentals okay. that people don't know about leadership. Right. It right. starts with self-awareness, which leads to a credibility. You know, you, you get up every morning and look in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And you shave. Uh, I shave, I don't comb my hair. But, you know, what we see in the mirror and what the men and women that we work with are different things. And so when you're growing up, you have lots of mirrors. You have parents, coaches, teachers. They tell you, Roshan, here's how you're doing. This yeah, is what yeah, you're good at yeah, and what you're yeah. not at. As you go up the food chain and you go from the first floor of a building to the 50th right, floor, right. it's harder to get those mirrors. People were reluctant to tell you what you're good at and what you're not. And so what we found is that uh, leaders have to look for that feedback. Feedback is a gift. And if you get good feedback, you know where you are, you're going to always be creditable. Mm -hmm. And if you're creditable, people are going to trust you, and that's how work gets done in any organization, for profit or not for profit. Trust enables work to be accomplished. Mm. Let's, let's talk about feedback, because yeah. you know most leaders, they say they're more open, very open to feedback, right. but they struggle with yeah. you know, really getting feedback. Right. Well, not just getting, but wanting the feedback. You know? uh, why is that, and, and how, how do we overcome this? Uh, you have to overcome it by understanding that feedback is a gift. In my office in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, the chair that's opposite by my desk, I have labeled the gift chair. And so if you come in and talk to me, or Suresh, who's my vice president here in, in the Asia Pacific, if he comes in to see me, I say, sit down in the gift chair and give me some feedback. And you have to develop that mentality that it's not criticism, it's a gift. It's something that's going to help you get better. The best leaders that we study, and we have data on over 600,000 leaders, they're people who seek out feedback. Whether they're the CEO of a multinational or a small, middle-sized, uh, small enterprise here in Malaysia. Mm. What's, I mean, based on your research, what's 
what's what's a leader look like? What should a leader look like? A leader should be somebody with confidence and humility. Mm -hmm. The days of the rock star CEO are over. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're hiring men and women like that for your organization, you're inviting risk into your organization. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look in the Wall Street Journal, Asia, uh, New York uh, Financial Times. Right. You're going to see where these men and women are derailing. Mm -hmm. And they're de derailing because they think they're more important mm -hmm. than their teammates or their organization. Yep. And in fact, you know, it's whether it's Jim Collins' study or CCL's yep. research, right. our research says those men and women who have confidence but a sense of humility, yep. they want to accomplish the mission, but they understand that leadership is a team sport, it's mm -hmm. not an individual sport. Mm -hmm. And the people who win are the people who pass that baton in the race better than the other organizations. Mm -hmm. And you don't pass the baton unless you have leaders at every level. Of exactly. An yeah. Yeah. And how do you create these leaders at every level? Because that's that's a big challenge yeah. in Asia. Well, that's why we're in business. Okay. Uh, you know, we do this exceptionally well. We have programs for all levels of leadership. We have coaching, and it's not based on bunny business. Mm -hmm. It's based on forty years of research. So, we came out to the Asia Pacific late mm -hmm. seven years ago, mm -hmm. but before we ever ran a program, we did research on leaders in this world. Yep. And, and understood the cultures in the different uh, markets. Okay. And then we started t talking about it, and that's important. Okay, so yeah. what, what's the difference between Asian leaders and, and the West? Well, actually, there are more similarities. Okay, so let's talk yeah. about similarities. So, so the strengths of, mm -hmm. uh, I think, of uh, the Asian leaders here are many of them do have more of a sense of humility. Okay. You know, it's because of the culture. They also have a sense that it's not about the individual, it is about the organization. So. So you start off with some natural advantages because of the culture, because of the uh, uh, of the family upbringings and, and the strong bonding. Uh, that's that's a, a big plus. Yeah. But what what are the downsides? I mean, every you know every time there's this comparison between yeah. the West and you you know the leaders seem to thrive uh, in the West, but yeah. we seem to struggle. Uh, or at least that's the perception we have. Yeah, I don't think that's an accurate perception. I think what it is is. You know, people are at different levels. And so, for instance, in this great country, you have an awful lot of small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, you know, you're, you're in junior high school or high school or college. You grow, and as that organization grows, your leaders have to grow. Mm -hmm. It is important. You know, we have found, this is very important for your listeners, uh, the best leaders are the most engaged uh, leaders and they're the best learners. Mm -hmm. So leadership is all about learning the whole your whole life. You're on a leadership journey. I'm on a leadership journey. It ends when our life ends, not earlier. So it's very important. But I don't see it where there's a weakness. If there's a weakness uh, in any part of the world, not just in Malaysia, but in the U.S. or in, in the Middle East, mm -hmm. it can be the educational system. Yeah. We all need to focus on that. I know you have a yeah. focus on it. We intensely focus on helping young students young leaders in both universities and high schools mm -hmm. to think about it at an earlier stage. But uh, an education system is incredibly important to developing leaders in your country. Yeah. It's a value add. You know, but, but many, I mean, if you look at it, like the, the Steve Jobs and the Bill right. Gates and all, I mean, they, they so-called purport that we don't have an education, you know, we flunked out of university and so right. on. Right. It's not really true, though, as you know, if you look at their yeah, things, you know, yeah, yeah. you don't get into Harvard because you haven't had a good education. Yeah, yeah. You leave because you're not challenged by what they're teaching. I uh, so I, I think that's an important difference. Mm -hmm. One thing that we find in educational systems that's important is you don't want to just have the sage on the stage, mm -hmm. you know, that person that's right. directing. Right. It needs to be interactive. Right. And, you know, when you have an interactive group, that's when you become more uh, of a a, a real creative, innovative type of leader. Uh, I think that's a weakness in some education systems, including part of the United States, where it's still too much directive and not enough of the collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah you, you've seen this in your studies, and we see it in ours, that uh, the most entrepreneurial uh, cultures are those that are, again, where there's collaboration. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, this innovation doesn't happen because of one person having a eureka moment. Mm -hmm. it's, again, it's a team sport. Mm -hmm. And if you're not putting together different groups of men and women with different skill sets, you're not going to be one of those creative. You've worked for them and I've worked for them. Yeah, yeah. The creative organizations are very diverse organizations. That's something that's good for any country or any organization. Yeah. You know, let's, let's, I, let me zoom in back on this, the whole learning agility, which you talk about yeah. is very important. Right. So how does one develop this learning agility? It's, there's interesting, there's a study by a, a 
professor at uh, Stanford. She's done research for 30 years, Carol Dweck. You and I, uh, we can have, she says, two different types of mindsets. We can have a growth mindset or we can have a fixed mindset. Now, I've only known you for 30 minutes, but you have a growth mindset. You want to get better every day. You believe you have untapped potential with inside you. And most leaders are like that. But the question that we always ask is, okay, you have a growth mindset, but how do you look at your men and women? Do you look at the men and women that are in the camera here or the audio as people that have a fixed mindset, they can't do math, they can't take your job. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we have a lot of leaders that look mm -hmm. like that. And yeah. so they're not giving their men and women the opportunity to develop themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but we think it's very important to start at the earliest ages talking to young men and women saying, hey, it's not about your DNA. Mm -hmm. You have a growth mindset. You have untapped potential. Let's help bring it out. Okay. Let me, let me ask you a question. If I'm a young college graduate, just came out of school, right. and I want to become a leader, what advice would you give me? Well, start even earlier than then. Okay. You know, let's, well, well, okay. Uh, let's say that somebody is in high school. Okay. They ought to be thinking of themselves as a leader. And you know, a lot of times, having led universities and colleges earlier in my career, I always talked to young people and said, you know, leadership isn't about you. It's about helping other men and women. Mm -hmm. When you put it in that context, these, these young millennials who I have so much faith and confidence yeah. in around the globe, uh, I think they respond to that. But if they're thinking about someone who might be a politician or somebody that might be a, a bank president, they don't necessarily admire those men and women because they, they, they want to help. They, they want to do things where you know, they're doing something that's bigger than themselves. And so if you put leadership in the context that leaders are able to help other men and women, they want to do it. And the earlier that you start on doing that, it's like any other muscle, the better you get. because. You can accelerate skills, but yeah. you can't accelerate the experience. They've got to have those experiences. True, true. And, yeah. and you know, some of these experiences are experiences of failure. Right. And there's a saying that failure right. is the mother of right. all success. Is that right. true? And yeah. what about your life personally? Yeah. Have you have you gone through failure? I wake up uh, and make <laughs> mistakes every day. Uh, I think the important thing, and we, you know, this study that I talked about earlier, we call it the lessons of experience. Mm -hmm. The most successful people fail and fail often, but they, le they always learn yeah. from their mistakes, just like great organizations do. Great organizations uh, have an attitude, fail early and fail often, mm -hmm. and you'll succeed more or, or earlier, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah. So, so we, we need to have a culture that permits failure. And when you do, you really have a much stronger culture where people were out. I used to fly airplanes, and right. we teach people to get out on the edge of their envelope, right. both the aircraft and the plane. Right. Uh, and the person. And when you do that, that's when you perform the best. But people aren't going to go out there unless they feel like they have the, 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 the willingness, the permission to do that. And leaders set that. Right, right. Well, you know, one, one, one question on comfort zone, you know, there's, there's this th take that you have to always get out of your comfort zone. Right. Uh, is that true? And, and how often? Yeah. Uh, every, day. every day. In other words, you, you don't want to settle for mediocrity. Or organizations and people can be mediocre mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. So if you want excellence, you've got to give permission pe to people to get out there. Mm -hmm. We're famous for not only our programs, right. but for our coaching. And the way our coaches coach is, you know, they encourage people uh, to, to get out there and push off, mm -hmm. you know, to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the roles of the leader in today, in, in, especially in this VUCA world that right. we're in, is right. You know, you, you've got to make people feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and the best leaders do that. Yep. They, they, they say, look, we know you're going to be uncomfortable, but we have confidence in you. You can do this, mm -hmm. and uh, yep. we'll support you. And in fact, by keeping, you keep continuously doing that, that right. grows a person, right? Right, right. But, you know, I sense that you have this, and the, the best leaders and the best organizations have this continual dissatisfaction. They celebrate their victories. Mm -hmm but they want to get better tomorrow. Yep. The organization, yep. the individual, and those that have that kind of attitude, they do. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, one, one last question. What, you know, if, if, if I were to ask you to give advice to you know, aspiring leaders, what advice would you give? Hmm. Uh, go for it. Okay. You know, I really think that, uh, you know, everybody has the potential to be a leader. And the sooner people understand that, the sooner they can, you know, I used to work for a guy by the name of Colin Powell, mm -hmm. who was oh, a famous okay. guy in okay. our country. Yep. And he used to say, you know, the lid on anyone's potential right. is not their ability, it's their leadership ability. Yep. And so, you know, we, whether we're scientists or nurses or teachers or students, 
you know, if we can lift that lid by being better leaders, we have potential to help people. Fantastic. John Ryan. Uh, John, Thank thanks you, a lot Roger. for being on the show. John Very Ryan pleasure. here on the Leadernomics Show.